Michael Eisner, and welcome to the Disney Sunday movie. I'm here in front of the Magic Shop on Main Street at Walt Disney World in Florida. As you can see, I'm here with some friends to help introduce tonight's musical fantasy, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, starring Miss Angela Lansbury. Our resident expert on witchcraft is here to remind me that tonight's movie is about an apprentice witch who uses her magical powers for good, not evil. My royal friend here, who rules the storybook island of Namboombu, just happens to be the world's greatest soccer fan. He's here to make sure that I tell you that tonight's movie has the wildest soccer game you've ever seen. And I'm here to tell you that bed knobs and broomsticks proves once again that Walt Disney had the magic touch. Whoa. <laughs> Hello, I'm Disney Dave, and welcome to my channel. Here, you can find things all Disney and Walt Disney World. If you're new to my channel, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified when new content is uploaded. How does she do that? Because she's a witch. That's the sort of thing witches do. Now the advance! Bed knobs and broomsticks is a live-action, animated, musical fantasy motion picture produced by Walt Disney Studios and was released nationally in the US on December the 13th, 1971 after its UK charity premiere on the 7th of October that year. 2021 sees a significant celebration for the movie as it celebrates its 50th anniversary. The movie follows eccentric spinster and amateur witch Eglatine Price, played by Angela Lansbury during the Battle of Britain. Miss Eglatine Price is a new witch in training and decides to use her supernatural powers to defeat the Nazi invasion of England with the aid of three children who have been evacuated from the London Blitz. A house of horror, that's what we've come to. Joined by Emilius Brown, who is the head of Miss Price's witchcraft training school, the crew use an enchanted bed to travel into a fantasy land and foil the invading German troops. This unlikely family ventures into London's colourful Portobello Road, travels beneath the beautiful briny sea, and meets the Lion King of the Lost Isle of Nabumbu. Finally, defeating the German army by raising a ghost army of historical armour. Disney's adaptation of Bedknobs and Broomsticks is actually based upon two books. The Magic Bedknob, or How to Become a Witch in 10 Easy Lessons, and Bonfires and Broomsticks, both penned by English children's author Mary Norton, who also wrote the Borrowers series. Walt Disney acquired the rights to the Magic Bed Knob in 1945, but it wasn't until 1961 when Disney was trying to purchase the rights to Mary Poppins, and thanks to the movie Saving Mr. Banks, it's now fairly well known that Walt Disney had a tough time negotiating the movie rights with the Mary Poppins author P.L. Travels. But he wasn't too worried. He told the Sherman Brothers not to worry about not securing the rights to Mary Poppins because he would just use their songs in bed knobs and broomsticks. When Mary Poppins finally got approved, Disney decided to push the other movie about magic back several years because the two stories were similar. And Mary Poppins went straight in production, abandoning bed knobs and broomsticks. Then again, in 1966, production again started on Bedknobs and Broomsticks, only to be scrapped once again due to the similarities to Mary Poppins, and Disney did not want to release both movies so close to each other. Fast forward to 1969, finally the green light was given for production to commence. Bedknobs and Broomsticks reunited the creative team behind Disney's blockbuster Mary Poppins, including director Robert Stevenson, 
producer and writer Bill Walsh, co-writer Don DeGardi, art director Peter Ellenshaw, special effects technician Yusuf Lysep, and the award-winning songwriting team of Robert B. and Richard M. Sherman. Robert Stevenson already had a string of Disney hit movies under his belt, including Darby O'Gill and the Little People, Old Yellow, Blackbeard's Ghost, Kidnapped, The Love Bug, as well as the hugely successful Mary Poppins. For the role of Eglantine Price, several actresses were considered, including Lisa Caron, Lynn Redgrave, Judy Kahn, and Julie Andrews. Initially, Andrews turned down the role, afraid of being typecast, but would go on to change her mind a few months later. But this was too late, as Angela Lansbury had already signed her contract. This was also the last feature film that longtime Disney studio songwriters Richard M. Sherman and Robert B. Sherman wrote songs for until the Tigger movie in the year 2000. They also briefly returned in the early 1980s to write songs for Epcot Center. The 21st century begins October 1, 1982. Epcot Center, Walt Disney World. Angela Lansbury hated what she called by the numbers acting in the movie due to the heavy special effects. The entire movie had to be storyboarded in advance, shot for shot. Every moment was predetermined and the actress wasn't free to explore her character naturally. Ron Moody was originally slated as Amelius Brown, but he refused to star in the movie unless he received top billing, which Walt Disney Studios would not allow. He was ultimately replaced with David Tomlinson, who had previously starred as George Banks in Mary Poppins. The three Rawlins children, Charlie, Carrie and Paul, were played by Ian Wayhill, Cindy O'Callaghan and Roy Snart. Wayhill had previously dropped out of school and began his acting career in an uncredited role as a schoolboy in David Copperfield. He auditioned before Disney talent scouts for one of the child roles in Bedknobs and Broomsticks in London and was cast as Charlie. Now how's a ruddy big bed like that going to get out of this room with those little windows? I don't know, Charles. There's a great many things about magic that I don't know. We'll just have to find out. Prior to Bedknobs, Snart was a child actor, appearing in numerous commercials. He was cast as Paul for his cheeky looks. That's better than a toad, that's a rabbit. Bother, I never seem to be able to manage toads. <coughs> for the part of Carrie, O'Callaghan explained that the casting directors trolled schools looking for children with London accents. I was asked to attend an audition at Pinewood, she recalled, where I had to stand up and tell a funny story. I talked about how horrible my brother was to me. I was a big fan of Mary Poppins and couldn't believe I was going to be in a Disney movie. For the movie's 45th anniversary, all the child actors had a reunion in London for the first time and watched the movie together, which featured a special message from Angela Lansbury. Finally, we have a chance to reminisce about how it all began. My overriding memory is how well we got on, the three of us. I don't remember any of us, however young we were, ever being naughty. It was a really professional engagement and Angela sort of set the tone. We sort of upped our game because of her. Very much an inspiration for me, I remember thinking... And very much our mother. Hello, Cindy and Ian and Roy. I'm so sorry I was unable to join you today to celebrate the great film we made together. This film is enjoyed by children in Britain and the USA, in fact, all over the world. For that reason, I'm thrilled to have this opportunity to celebrate this with you all today. You look great. <laughs> uh, 
Good morning, Miss Price. Morning. There they are. Oh, Miss Price, what a charitable thing you are doing, taking in these poor unfortunates in the city. Roddy McDowell is credited third in the cast list, but appears on screen for less than 10 minutes. His character, Mr. Rowan Jelk, was the local clergyman. Deleted scenes have now shown there was a minor subplot to the movie, revealing he was interested in marrying Miss Price, largely for her property. The Sherman Brothers repurposed one of their discarded songs for Mary Poppins for bed knobs and broomsticks. The beautiful Briny would have been performed while Mary and the children sailed off for an adventure in Admiral Boom's ship house. And Bill called us up one day and said, uh, look, fellas, you have a song that's perfect for bed knobs that we never used in Mary Poppins. There was a sequence in the film, Mary Poppins, that we did four or five numbers for called the Magic Compass sequence. They go around the world on this magic compass. The children and Mary Poppins, she'd spin the compass and then they wind up in exotic places. One of the times that they spun the compass, they wound up at the bottom of the beautiful briny sea. The brothers also wrote two songs that never made it past pre-production, despite Richard's protests. In The Fundamental Elements, Miss Price would explain her philosophy to the children after turning Charlie into a rabbit. Excuse me, Charles. Pellegrin, apogee, pedigree, perogee. Oh, Charlie! And the other song, Solid Citizen, Miss Price would have sung this to distract King Leonardus and get the magic star. Ultimately, the soccer game replaced it. Both of these tracks went unheard of until demos performed by Richard Sherman appeared on the CD soundtrack reissue. Part of the fundamental elements was incorporated into Don't Let Me Down portion of Eglantine. Also famously, when the songwriting duo originally pitched some of these tunes to the team early on, Walt was, well, not terribly engaged. According to Richard Sherman, we were so carried away telling our story and singing loud and Walt was sort of nodding off. Despite this apparent disinterest, Walt did like the songs a lot. Despite the very British setting of the movie, the entire film, including the Portobello Road and the castle scenes, was shot at Disney's studio in Burbank, California. The only other thing off lot was some coastal scenes of the Nazi soldiers, which were shot on a nearby California beach. Additional scenes were also shot on location at Coffee Castle in Dorset, England. Filming the live action scenes lasted for 57 days, while the animation and special effects required another 10 months. Did you know there was a hidden Mickey in the movie? If you look closely at the audience during the animated soccer match, you'll see a familiar face. There's a bear wearing a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. You will also probably recognize the voice of the bear who pulls everybody out of the sea. He is voiced by Dal McKinnon. <laughs> Kennan was also the voice behind Grumpy, various small parts in Mary Poppins, Sleeping Beauty, Lady and the Tramp and 101 Dalmatians. He is also the guy who tells riders they're about to enjoy the wildest ride in the wilderness before you board Big Thunder Mountain Railroad at Disney theme parks. Howdy folks! Please keep your hands, arms and legs inside the train and remain seated at all times. 
Now then, hang on to them hats and glasses, cause this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness. The actual magical bed knob is still around today. It is now at the Walt Disney Archives, housed in a display case in their reading room. Other props also in the archive include the Isle of Naboomboo book, Emilius Brown's suitcase and Eglantine's flying broom. Bed knobs and broomsticks had an original running time of 141 minutes and was scheduled to premiere at Radio City Music Hall. However, in order to accommodate the theatre's elaborate stage show, the movie had to be trimmed down to two hours, in which 23 minutes were ultimately removed from the motion picture. The removed scenes included a minor subplot involving Roddy McDowell's character, which was reduced to one minute, and three entire musical sequences a step in the right direction, with a flair, and nobody's problems. The Portobello Road sequence was also reduced from about 10 minutes to 3 minutes. I watched them when they were rehearsing, you know. Uh, Donald McHale did such an extraordinary job of choreographing all of that in the spirit of the London streets, you know, with, with all of the various ethnic groups represented, and, and it was such an exciting musical number. The movie opened to mixed reviews from critics, some of whom praised the live action animated sequences. Also, the movie went on to receive five Academy Award nominations, winning an Oscar for the Best Special Visual Effects. The winners are... Alan Maley and Eustace Lysette and Danny Lee for bed knobs and broomsticks. Um, a number of people have said that, uh, <laughs> this is rather difficult to explain, but um, in the uh, technical awards, there's not much excitement. I can assure you, when you're up here, the excitement is ecstatic. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of the Academy, thank you very much. My sincere thanks to the all and members of the Academy. This was also the last feature movie released prior to the death of Walt Disney's surviving brother, Royal Disney, who died one week later. Also rumoured to be in the pipeline is a new stage show musical adaptation of the beloved Disney classic. This was slated for a 2019 debut, but up until now, nothing has surfaced. Since its release, Bedknobs and Broomsticks has lived underneath the shadow of its more successful and more popular stablemate Mary Poppins. This seems a shame, because while the earlier movie remains the superior of the two, there is so much more in Bedknobs to enjoy and recommend. It is nearly 50 years since it was first released and it still continues to offer breezy, spirited entertainment for all ages.